Welcome to another episode of Sports and Discourse with your host, Derek Stevenson. And today, I got two things that I want to talk to y'all about. The first one is Imani Bates. And then after that, I want to talk to y'all a little bit about this recruit named Justin Edwards, right? And here's the thing. Imani Bates, he probably has been one of the most polarizing recruits over the last several years. He, I think, was the headline for Coach Penny, Anthony Hardaway down in Memphis. He was the top headlining recruit. And most people figure he was going to be a one-and-done recruit in Memphis, right? And he went to Memphis, he played, and things just didn't seem to go well for the guy. He had a very um, underwhelming season, if you will. I think he only averaged nine points a game. And I guess he just didn't fit with the program down there so he entered the transfer portal right and a lot of people you know were starting to get real down on the kid I think I had read some reports that were saying that a lot of NBA general managers and you know just I guess scouts and such were saying that they didn't feel like you could build an NBA team around Imani Bates right and that probably was really disappointing for the kid to hear if he in fact heard that and hopefully it'll work out for him I'm not sure if I see NBA star potential maybe maybe you can't build a team around him maybe he will have to be a role player I'm not sure but hopefully he'll work it out and you know figure out what he needs to do and get back on track but initially when he entered the transfer portal it was almost a foregone conclusion that he may end up transferring to Louisville. I know Louisville was recruiting him pretty heavy. And me, myself, personally, I thought he would end up at Louisville. Louisville kind of, you know, as soon as they hired uh, Kenny Payne, they kind of became like the the trending topic for a couple of weeks. And everybody with um, everybody knows with Kenny's connections to the NBA and several high profile players in the NBA that he used to deal with at Kentucky. Um, a lot of people thought that base was going to end up at Louisville. Like I said, myself included, I thought he was definitely going to be there. And ultimately he ended up choosing Eastern Michigan. Right. And a lot of people have been having some mixed feelings about that. Me personally, I feel like the kid may have chose Eastern Michigan because he may be thinking that number one he's from the area so he's going to feel more comfortable and then number two maybe he might have a chance for the system to be built around him so that he he might get the ball in his hands more he may um, be able to drive up his numbers and his averages a little bit more and you know a lot of people kind of think that maybe he may, may be making a mistake me personally, I feel like having good numbers in college is always a plus, but it's not necessarily um, the end all be all, if you will. A lot of times, you know, guys don't average a whole lot of points in college, or even in some cases, they might not even average a lot of minutes, especially with UK over the last several years. UK has only had a few 20-point scores, if you will, under Calipari. I think Malik Monk averaged 20 points a game, and I think Jamal Murray might have been the other uh, other player that averaged 20 points a game. But everybody else was under 20 points. And if you think about all the top elite players that played at Kentucky, that have went to the NBA and had you know some pretty good success, none of them was high-volume scorers at Kentucky. One thing Calipari does is he tries to teach all the players to learn to play within the system and play with each other. And then if you go to the NBA and you're lucky enough to be in a situation where you get the ball in your hands more and you can showcase more of your talent, then that's fine. But um, a lot of players don't really do big numbers at Kentucky. I think I've seen um, a clip of Bradley Beal. And uh, he was telling his AAU team that the numbers really don't matter that much in college. Um, the NBA scouts are looking for skill level, right? So you could average 12 points a game. And if you have high skill level, if you can do several things on the court well, if you play hard, those things tend, tend to stand out more than just scoring a lot of points. And um, 
I seen Devin Booker make a comment on it, and he said that he actually never scored 20 points a game at Kentucky, which is interesting when you think about a guy that went to the NBA and scored 70 points in the NBA, but he never scored 20 when he was in college. So a lot of people feel like Bates may be just trying to take the easy road to play at a smaller school so he can drive up his numbers. Um, Me personally, I feel like he probably should have went to a bigger school because at the end of the day, in eastern Michigan, he could end up being um, lost in the sauce, if you will, because if you really think about it, how many times are eastern Michigan going to be having TV appearances during the season? They're not going to be playing against a whole lot of great competition. So at the end of the day, it's probably going to be harder for scouts to judge him at Eastern Michigan than if he would have went to a Louisville. At least if he would have went to a Louisville, you know he would have played um, several high-profile games on TV. He would have had to play Duke a couple of times, North Carolina a couple of times, and then they probably would have, you know, had a a pretty decent um, non-conference schedule where they would have probably played Kentucky and other schools like that. So he would have had more of a chance to showcase himself against better talent and hopefully if Louisville ends up building their roster, he would have better players to play with. Now, at this point in the game, I don't know what uh, Louisville's uh, complete roster is going to be looking like. A lot of people probably feel like it's not going to be that strong. So maybe that might have been one of the things that, um, you know, maybe made him lean away from Louisville. But to be honest with you, I have a couple of sources that told me, and I don't really want to necessarily put this out there but a lot of people told me that some of these other schools was a little bit hesitant to deal with Imani Bates because of some of the people that he has around him I heard that um Kenny Payne became a little less interested um when he realized some of the people that he would have had to deal with to get this kid and I even heard a last ditch effort for him to return to uh, Memphis was actually declined by coach penny himself so like i said um a lot of times you you have to be very careful um when you put yourself in these situations because you need a number one you need to find a good fit you need to have good people around you that have your best interest at heart but aren't going to step over their boundaries and end up um, making you an undesirable person right and I feel bad for a kid that was once uh, looked at as the number one recruit, uh, sure, one and done player. And now he seems to be struggling. He seems to may have been a little exposed. And hopefully, you know, he can go to Eastern Michigan and work his way back up and, you know, get himself prepared to be in the draft. But I'm not really for sure um, if he really just has what it takes or maybe he's not a high character kid. I'm not really for sure. I don't know anything about him like that. And I don't want to put that out there. So hopefully it'll work out for the kid. Um, But anyways, all my Louisville fans out there, how did y'all feel when y'all heard that uh, Bates was going to Eastern Eastern Michigan instead of Louisville? Were you upset? Did you even really want Bates on the team? Y'all let me know how y'all feel about him. And, um, you know, we'll discuss it further in the future. But before I let y'all go, for my BBN fans, I want to tell y'all that I just heard that um, Calipari himself actually has stepped up and um, he's been in contact with another 2023 recruit real heavy over the last couple of weeks named Justin Edwards, right? And Justin Edwards had uh, said in a couple of interviews that, you know, he's been talking to Calipari a lot himself and it's really actually... um, had a lot of impact on how he feels about his recruiting. He actually really appreciated talking to the head coach instead of just talking to assistants. And I have to tell you, Justin Edwards seems like a pretty nice player, man. And right now I think um he might be ranked in the top 15 or top 20, something like that. But he actually, when I'm looking at him, he actually looks like he has a really nice versatile skill set. He looks like a decent ball handler. He looks like he can... um play shooting guard to small forward he has um decent uh shooting ability he's capable of getting to the rim and you know he's pretty athletic so I'm gonna keep my eye on Justin um but I actually like this kid man and like I said you know we already got Rob and Reed and hopefully we could end up you know snagging um 
couple more players, but if we get this Justin, um, this Justin Edwards kid, man, he he looks really good, and I'm gonna keep an eye on him. Um, you know, I'm gonna start watching some some games and watching some more footage and see what I like of him. But he he seems really versatile, man. He's a left hander, kind of remind me of uh, James Young a little bit. Um, he might not be quite as good of a shooter as James Young, but the kid looks like he's one of those guys that um he ha- another kid that has a high motor, like he's. He's always attacking the basket, and even when he misses shots going to the basket, he, you know, he worked real hard to get a lot of offensive rebounds in the second possession. So I really like the kid, man. So y'all, let me know what y'all think about him, and um, I'm gonna keep my eye out on him, and we'll get back at it next time. Sports and discourse with Derek Stevenson.